Hi, everyone. My name is Suzanne, and I'm a Chinese metaphysics master in Hong Kong. We are rapidly approaching the year 2025, uh, which would be the year of the wood snake. Now, this starts on February 3rd, 2025, according to the Chinese calendar. And of course, we are curious to see how this affects us, how this, is, how this affects our life, our career, our finances, depending on what animal signs we have in our Baza chart. So today we're going to focus on the horse. So everybody who has a horse in their Baza natal chart, this is the forecast for you. And I will talk about the good and the bad and the challenges and opportunities and what you can do to make the most of the year of the wood snake. Now, obviously, first things we need to actually see whether you have a horse in the chart. So go to this link here to plot your chart. I'll also post the plotter link in the description to the video. And then just uh, enter your date and time of birth. Time is always better because then you get a complete picture. Um, but essentially, you will end up with um, a chart like this. This is your natal chart. Now, the natal chart uh, is comprised of um, four pillars. We call them pillars. So we've got a year pillar. We've got a month pillar. We've got a day pillar. And we also have an hour pillar. And as you can see here, there are actually four animal signs. There's a tiger in the year, there's a dragon in the month, there's a rat in the day, and there's a snake in the hour. So you can have more than just one animal signs. Most people think, oh, I'm born in the year of the dragon or the tiger or whatever. This is what I am. But this is a very simplistic view. Um, otherwise, we would only have like 12 different types of people in the world. Um, actually, you are the sum total of a lot of energies that are present in your chart, among them all the animal signs that you have in your year, month, day and hour. So check all of those four animal signs and see whether you have a horse there. Uh, not just in the year, yeah, you may be born in a horse month or on a horse day or in a horse hour, then this particular forecast applies to you. Now, the four pillars, so the year, month, day and hour, they all also relate to different aspects of your life. So if you have the horse in the year, uh, then this forecast relates more to um, whatever happens like on the margins of your life, like the, the industry you're working in, the wider circle of friends, not close intimate friends, but wider uh, social and professional network, maybe your clients, your, your environment um, in general, and also um, uh, relatives, but then fairly removed relative, distant relatives, yeah? If you have the horse in a month, then the forecast relates more to your work environment, your immediate workplace, your career. If you're a business owner, then this would relate to your business, uh, maybe your business partners, and it can also relate to your parents. If you have the horse in the day, then the forecast relates to you as a person. So the your health, um, your outlook in life, um, are you more positive this year, more negative this year, what's going on internally, but also your relationships, uh, romantic or otherwise, yeah, it could be close familiar relationship or very close intimate friends. And then lastly, if you have the horse in the hour, this relates to, let's say, your investments, your dreams, your ambitions, the things you want to do in life, your goals, uh, but also your children. So if you have children already or you're planning for children, then this relates to that particular aspect. So take note of where the horse appears, if it appears in your chart, and then you get a little bit more of a nuanced picture of what is in store for you in the year 2025. All right, so let's take a look here at the horse. Now, the horse uh, has a whole host of auspicious stars and then a few inauspicious stars. And as I always say, um, humans have the tendency to just focus on the negative. Um, but in Chinese astrology, what we do is we make full use, 100% use of all the auspiciousness we have in our chart to cancel out the negative. And if you do that, then you really don't have anything to fear or worry of um, with respect to these inauspicious energies that may or may not appear in your life. Also, keep in mind that the inauspicious energies that may enter your life in 2025, they need to be activated by certain actions and activities. 
if you just avoid those actions and activities, then uh, nothing will happen. So keep that in mind before you are too fearful of, uh, of what may come, right? Now let's get started, have a look at the auspicious stars. So the first one is the sun star. Now this is one of the best, um, most powerful nobleman stars to have. A nobleman is a person who can help you in life, like in all aspects of life, career, personal life, finances. Essentially, this energy helps you dissipate many, many negative situations. And you will always have the help of influential people around you, as long as you ask, right? So this is this is the thing. Having a nobleman star in the chart is great, but we then also need to sort of overcome our ego and ask for help. That is oftentimes the most difficult thing for a lot of people. So make sure that you ask for help. You learn to ask for help, yeah? We can't do everything by ourselves all the time. But this sun star essentially makes it easier for you to achieve your dreams and your goals, provided you have a goal. So for the horse people, um, have a goal. Set yourself a fantastic goal for 2025, something that you're excited about, something that you're passionate about that you can achieve. Uh, and then just ask for help. Look at who you need to connect with to achieve this goal and the help will be right there. Yeah, Have clarity over what you want to do and then go for it. Um, the Sun Star also mostly brings male noble people so it's mostly the males in your life who can help you or very very uh, dominant or um um alpha females yeah that's also the case so make sure that you make use of this now the intelligence star and the study hall study hall star as the name implies has to do with learning with upskilling so both of them essentially have the same meaning uh, it's a great year to learn something new so if you if you look at your life and think about what it is that you could learn this year to maybe triple your income, then take up a course, make sure that you learn it or that you at least start learning it this year because it will be much, much easier for you to absorb new skills, to absorb new knowledge and then make use of it, right? Then we've got the heavenly chef. Now, the heavenly chef is a lovely uh, energy because it essentially means you're surrounded by people who like to eat, who like to invite you out for dinners, lunch, whatever. You're, the entire year you're exposed to good food and people around you will invite you. Um, so it's it may be a little bit difficult to go on a diet if you have this particular star in your chart. Um remember everything in moderation yeah it doesn't mean that you're gonna put on weight but if you're not careful you most likely will because suddenly uh there's a lot more invitations or just a lot more temptation for good food yeah um there's just a lot of opportunities to wine and dine and 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 just um you know have a good time even if you go on to networking events you'll enjoy them more because there's better food uh or you enjoy the company of people more so this is a nice nice energy to have uh now then the peach blossom star this is generally associated with relationship luck so of course if you have the horse in your day then this is a great energy if you're single you could go out and meet someone new if you are in an existing relationship you can um, find opportunities to make this relationship more meaningful and connect with your partner on a deeper level. Now, um, essentially, peach blossom um, makes you more likable. Yeah, not to say that you're not already likable, but you know it's going to 10x that factor. So even if you don't have this in your day, uh, you can use this to make money. Like if you are, let's say you are a salesperson and you have this, uh, you have the horse in your in your month or in your year, uh, it's going to be easier for you to sell things because people like you. They like to be around you. They like to listen to you. So um, it will help you make better connections. And, you know, the moment people like someone, they're going to buy from them. Yeah. So really make use of this in your professional life as well. You can use it to get a promotion because suddenly you're going to be more likable to your boss or your superiors or even your colleagues. Yeah. Make use of this. This is a great energy, not just for relationship luck. Now, the tidy nobleman. 
This is another nobleman star, but this is one that is um it's a little bit tricky because essentially what happens here is that this energy brings people into your life who trigger you um, and uh, make you reconsider things or make you re revise your worldview. Yeah. So they will give you an epiphany or an aha moment, maybe not in the nicest way. Uh, you know, maybe we meet someone who is like, oh my God, what an asshole. Right. So we really don't like that person, but um, this person can still open doors for us or make us reconsider our own behavior, our own way of thinking. So in that way, Tai Chi noblemen, although they may not be the nicest people, they are actually very, very helpful. So they may say or do something that is so profound or that, that shakes us up in such a way that it awakens us. And so take that lesson on board because it can actually propel you forward. And if you are, happen to be in a metaphysics industry like myself, um, if you are doing anything, either Chinese metaphysics, Western metaphysics, or anything spiritual, then the Tai Chi Nobleman Star is also helpful because in, it increases your affinity with spirituality. And then we've got the Sky Emptiness, uh, sky emptiness Star. So... Some people consider this a negative, some people consider it a positive or somewhere in between. Um, sky emptiness means that there's a, there tends to be a lot of talk, but no action. Yeah, so you may find yourself having a lot of plans for the year, uh, but then you don't take action. And then at the end of the year, you look back at the year, the year and you're like, oh my, I, didn't, I really didn't uh, do what I was planning to do. And you realize that nothing you had planned has worked out the way you wanted it to or the way you'd hoped. Now, the solution to this is simply not to plan anything. <laughs> That's the easy way out. Or you get yourself an accountability buddy who kicks you in the butt whenever you're um, becoming too complacent. Now, the reason I've also put this here with auspicious stars is because um, the sky emptiness energy helps you to be at peace with yourself you don't really feel the need to compete too much or to be too ambitious you just find the way you are right so that's why i've put it more in the auspicious side but still i would say if you do have plans for 2025 and i would suggest you make big plans because of that sun star get an accountability buddy otherwise you're going to be a little bit too complacent now, um, looking at the inauspicious stars here. So not to be too afraid here. Um, they're really not all that bad. So the first one is the bad T. So this is a reminder to remove yourself or disassociate yourself from people who are always negative and who are always the victims. They're always complaining. So you will find that in 2025, you're surrounded by a lot of whiners and complainers, right? Um, and that can impact your luck because they just drag you down. So just remove yourself from those people. Just don't spend that much time with them. Otherwise, they will impact your energy field and just sort of like make you feel depressed as well. Um, then we've got the salty pool. Uh, salty pool brings lust and affairs. Yeah, if you're single, that's not necessarily an inauspicious star. Yeah, you just play the field. Uh, it brings some naughty energies into your life. And, um, you know, this can be a lot of fun. Again, if you're single, this can be a lot of fun. If you're in a relationship, make sure that you don't give in to temptation. Yeah, because that could really, really um, impact, negatively impact your existing relationship. So this is all free will choices. Yeah, Chinese astrology is about free will choices. Uh, the, the energies that are brought into your life are just an indicator of the things or the situations you may have to deal with. How you deal with them is up to you. Uh, salty pool is amplified by the red chamber uh, energy that we also have here. Again, it's a lustful energy. Um, it's a seductive energy. Uh, you may attract a lot of attention and, and, uh, you may even attract a lot of relationships, like superficial relationships that do not really grow you. Um, if you just want to have fun this year, if you're single, want to have fun, by all means, yeah, go and have fun. It's a good year to do it. Uh, but other than that, be a little bit discerning of who you spend time with, especially because there is the annual Shah and 
the annual Sha um, brings uh, moments where you get yourself in trouble due to your own actions. Yeah, it's not to do with anyone else. It's like you take the wrong decisions, you take the wrong actions and you get in trouble. Yeah, especially if you follow the temptations that are brought on by the salty pool and the red chamber. So resist the temptation and don't do things that you know could get you in trouble. All right. But other than that, it's a really lovely year for the horse. Make use of all of these auspicious stars that you have there. Uh, use them to your advantage and you're going to have a really, really good year. All right. Hopefully that uh, brought you a little bit of positive vibes uh, for 2025 to all of those who have the horse in the chart. Um, if you would like to have an in-depth reading where we go into much, much more than just animal, animal signs, um, we're looking at every single aspect of 2025 for you personally, then do get in touch. My email address is in the description to the video. And in the meantime, Stay tuned uh, for the next few installments of the Animal Sign Outlook for 2025. Uh, like my uh, channel, subscribe to it so you don't miss out. And um, I will see you soon. Take care.